following program is classified G. It's suitable for all ages. And welcome to Business Best. This is a platform where we showcase the best in the business and we will be introducing to you people who have excelled in their particular field in order to showcase their latest developments in their respective industry. So today on the show we have a business, basically a communications consultancy, So, um, which who believes in telling a story can play wonders in bringing life to a brand and it's my pleasure to invite Arshad Najmuddin who is the founder and the managing director of the Congress. Arshad, thank you very much for joining with us on the show tonight. Thank you very much for inviting, glad to be here. Arshad, I've seen your work, I've seen your productions, they all have this creative and out of the box concept uh, which you bring to life and it's very interesting to watch actually. So what was your inspiration behind this? When did you identify that you have this talent and that why did you want to start this business in the first place? Well, uh, quite interesting question actually. Uh, it started as a childhood passion and a dream. Um, so we were a bunch of friends who uh, were doing storytelling as a means to uh, sort of um, showcase maybe our, we could say just frustrations or like the talents or express. Uh, I belong to an urban neighborhood. Uh, so that, 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 that plays an integral part in bringing out the Congress. And uh, we were a bunch of friends who sort of uh, got together and started doing creative things, playing with video cameras and uh, started doing mini skits. So that's how it all started. Um, and uh, it grew from there to, to become like a profitable communications consultancy today. Oh, that's so, yeah. great to hear. <laughs> so other than videography, what are the other sectors that you provide or the other services that you provide? Um, so we started off as a as a production uh, business, a video production business. So our main avenue of uh, storytelling was um, videography and film, actually. Um, so after uh, quite a couple of years uh, trying and uh, experimenting things with filming, we also uh, we were forced rather with uh, the advancements in technology and media and platform to get into a digital sphere. Um, when we started off about the storytelling or rather the, the videography um, uh, aspect of it, it was about a decade ago. Um, it was it was mostly uh, the digital sphere was not very prominent as it is today. So uh, we started off with like mini skits, Windows Movie Maker was like the go-to place where we edited videos and uh, mobile phone, mini mobile phone cameras and or um, uh, cyber shot cameras, what we called, <laughs> were the stuff that we were, or were the gadgets that we were using. Uh, then when it came to the digital sphere, so we advanced, um, and, and I'm talking about a, a, tr a, a, a transformation of about five to six years or seven years, um, we started into digital storytelling, which was more uh, a holistic experience of storytelling. It was not just video, but we had to do a uh, little bit of scripts and it was hosted on web platforms or rather um, uh, social media. Uh, YouTube was a, was a ba base platform, a video on demand site. So we had to uh, expand into a multifaceted way of telling stories. Uh, it included writing scripts to uh, narrating in different forms to using audio bytes to so our business developed from a uh, filmmaking um, uh, aspect of it to a more holistic fully fledged uh, digital storytelling arm right Alfred. but i've also seen in your website that you do photography website designing everything is handled in a small team if i'm right that's correct. So when, when it comes to uh, digital storytelling, all of these many facets of uh, the digital world comes into play. So our primary uh, media was uh, visual storytelling. However, uh, so that we had to portray our visual stories in different uh, media platforms, we used 
uh, we had to gain our skills and expertise in these many avenues. For example, uh, website development because we wanted to feature our content on websites. And uh, starting from a passion driven perspective where we were doing it uh, as, uh, as, a, as a means of, uh, as a means of uh, expressing during our early school days to then it gradually moved on to where we started doing this on a, on a commissions process or like we were commissioned to do the work uh, because people started seeing us, people started watching us, people started liking our videos, uh, we were working more on the development sector and uh, uh, since we came from an urban uh, neighborhood, um, since we came from an urban setting, uh, there was a there was a significant proportion of income disparities even I amongst our, our own clan. So, um, so now the Congress was earlier called the Samaje. Uh, so <laughs> that was uh, that was the basis. In in Singhala it was called Samaje, and in Tamil it was called the Sangam because uh, we belong to different ethnicities, ethnicities and different backgrounds. And uh, so, a, a lot of them came to tell their stories because they were either deprived of certain facilities and uh, urban poverty was rampant in, in the neighborhood that, uh, that uh, we were operating this small samaje rather. So uh, because of that there were a lot of uh, kids, uh, young adults who came in to use our platforms, use to get into our circles and start telling stories, um, producing music videos which uh, uh, mostly onto the rap side of the story. So uh, people started expressing that is how it started and then we gained momentum it translated into a more profitable venture where we where people saw how we were developing and then we incorporated the digital uh, digital side of the story and um, so when the digital side of the story came about uh, we started working on a very more of a commercial way where we started managing brands on a on an, on uh, on on sort of a paid projects basis uh, Whilst so all of this we were either studying, some of us were studying, some of us were in involved in other professions and some of us were doing also involved in daily labor. They were, there were some taxi drivers in our, in, our, in our clan, in our crew who came in part time to you know, uh, work on these commercial projects so that the income was distributed. You know, it, was, it was a collective of friends, it was a collective of you know, childhood friends I could call. Uh, who are coming together to do things and it uh, eventually we didn't see that it will translate into a profitable business where we are now working with uh, multinationals, international INGOs, NGOs and uh, development agencies and so on. Uh, since you said that uh, moving on to a digital pr platform, would you say that the transition period was very difficult for you? How did you manage that? Uh, I could also say yes and no both. Yes, because uh, we we were not uh, our capital was not as uh, as big as it uh, as we wanted it to be, and uh, since we started this as a very much of a, a passion project, we were not driven with uh, uh, our baselines or rather the profit making ideologies or ideas. So it was a it was a not it was more towards uh, creativity uh, an outlet a platform of creativity. Uh, because of that, there were issues uh, in in transforming to a digital uh, sphere where we were struggling with uh, the necessary equipments, infrastructure, and skill sets that were required to scale the the, the business up. Uh, but uh, at the same time, the technology was also getting convenient and affordable, so that it also played a role in uh, us getting in full time into this. Uh, taking it more serious because we uh, understood that the entry barriers were getting reduced. The cameras which hitherto uh, required uh, millions of rupees came into the, the uh, uh, 100,000 grands and it reduced, gradually kept on reducing. So the entry barriers started reducing and the translation or the transformation rather was relatively easy. We didn't see that coming in the beginning and we were not very agile we were not very welcoming and we were also anxious a little bit to see the advancements but then when we moved into the business started seeing things very different and started experiencing with the new equipment, gadgets, infrastructure, skill sets and uh, 
knowledge was available freely in open source flat platforms like you know in YouTube. So uh, the translation, or rather the transformation, was relatively easy. I could say it was not in the beginning. We were anxious, but then uh, going into the story, we figured out uh, it's not as bad as it looks. So Ashad, those were some of the challenges that you faced initially. Are you yeah. facing those challenges at the moment also? Or what were some of the greatest challenges you experienced uh, during this uh, time period? <laughs> it's great that you ask. Uh, one of the greatest challenges, I could say, being a communications uh, uh, outlet, the one of the greatest challenges that we face, how to uh, brand our own selves, uh, that change or the transformation from the Samaji or Sangam to the Congress. To a, to a more commercial perspective was indeed challenging because a lot of us were doing it for fun, doing it for passion. Uh, were, we were doing it at our spare time. So it was, it was not taken up very seriously. The numbers were not taken up very seriously. The, the bottom lines were not met. Uh, so the knowledge, skill development, and infrastructure development to do so was one of the grave challenges at that time and even, even uh, about five to six years ago when we sort of st started making uh, uh, visible translations into a very organized business venture. Uh, so I could say, yes, challenges is integral and part and parcel of any business, as uh, all of us would agree. Uh, now it is more more to do with uh, staying competitive with, uh, with the rest of the competition and staying in pie and staying ahead of the competition, I would say. Since you mentioned being very competitive in this industry, I'm pretty sure when clients approach you, they are looking for the best production, best uh, colors, best motion, everything, because whenever they want to brand themselves or when you talk about advertising, they're basically investing a lot of uh, time and money in this and they expect the output, output to be perfect. So what were... Uh, what's the competitive advantage that you have against the rest of the companies? Well, I could say uh, one of the key, th there are quite a few, but one of the key being uh, we are now, for the last uh, five to six years, being uh, the go-to place, or rather one of, the, uh, one of the only, I could say, the place where we specialize in behavioral change through communication. Uh, yes, do a lot of brands do speak about these. A lot of brands do have these, uh, uh, these adjectives and descriptions in the websites, but uh, when going to practice it, it's, it's, it's a different story when it comes to uh, in the reality. Uh, so I could say uh, we are a cohort of uh, professionals who actively practice behavioral change through communication. And uh, if you take a look at the composition of the team, the team has been growing with us for the past decade. Uh, either teams have, uh, now like as you mentioned, as I mentioned, um, it, has been, it has been a passion project for most of us who are involved in the business. So uh, it was going at, at any given time the business was functioning while people were coming and going in uh, at certain instances where they were using this as a, as a, as a place of asylum when they were translating or rather when they were transforming from one uh, occupation probably to another, getting uh, a job somewhere else. So you know they were always, they were parking themselves at, at, at the Congress or at the Samaje at any given point. So it is more of a passion project for all of us than a, than a profit-making venture. So I could say that competitive advantage is that we give all of it and we individually, we keep learning about it. We keep actively researching, learning how to do behavioral change, how to change, how to push a person to uh, actively make a decision, a purchasing decision, maybe a behavior decision. We'll work a lot with the development sector where we work in the areas of uh, violence against children, where we speak, uh, work in the areas of uh, empowering women, gender, uh, nutrition. So those are areas that we speak heavily and that we feel uh, that not a lot of people actively get involved because it is a, it is a deep area. 
It is a deep area when it comes to using uh, creative fields to communicate messages about these said elements. And uh, your, your end result, unlike in a, in a production, in, in, a, in a general business, your end result is not a consumer behavior. It's not a consumer purchase. It's not increase in sales. It's mostly in our business, it's the change of thought, attitude, and behavior. And uh, this is a serious area. And uh, I could say the competitive advantage is that, uh, one of the competitive advantages is that, that um, we do it as a passion project, and we have been doing it as a passion project. Right, thank you, Arshad. We'll go into a short commercial break. We'll be back soon with Business Best. Welcome back to Business Best and we are in discussion with Arshad Najbuddin who is the Managing Director and the Founder of Congress. Arshad, I believe in the first segment you gave a very vast idea about what your business is all about and a very good insight uh, to what you all are providing, the services that you all are providing. So Arshad, uh, coming back to our discussion, you mentioned that you have a very small team and it's just a clique of friends and I just can't imagine how your team is managing such vast projects and different varieties of uh, uh, concepts that you're handling at the moment. How do you manage it? Who's providing the training and did they have the talent from the beginning? How are they handling so much of capacity with such a, a small team? It's a, it's a very crucial question that you ask and also it has been one of the key success factors behind uh, the uh, growth of the Congress as uh, I, I could say because initially as I told you that it was a group of friends, a clique who hung out, uh, translated this into or changed this or grew this into a business. So it was always a challenge to grooming friends to become professionals, grooming um, friends to be uh, skilled and experty, uh, uh, experienced uh, um, creatives. But since we were growing together, I think uh, we were able to do some uh, strategic moves where we were able to, from those days, I think we didn't know whether we did on purpose or it fell in place. But uh, uh, like a variety of us, like we, we uh, chose paths, different fields, which are related to um, this avenue. So some of us grew to become animators, some of us chose photography, some of us were writers and directors, some of us uh, in, in so many different facets of this business. So we were training and uh, learning. So that provided us sort of a edge in terms of continuing education. And uh, that I could say to date has been the success. And uh, most of our team, I think, uh, my heart's out to them. They are multifaceted. And uh, they I could call them easily uh, jacks of all trades and masters of one. So they have their own individual expertise while also, and they have uh, a, a good knowledge on other related areas. All right, Arshad. So when uh, coming back to this industry, it's vital that you stay updated with the latest technology. So what are the strategies that you've taken in order to do so? Yeah, so we keep on updating ourselves. Like we have weekly workshops. We discuss about our concepts. And as soon as a project finishes, we have a debrief. And we keep uh, analyzing and brainstorming and also looking into the uh, 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 nitty-gritties that we should have addressed in the process. And we always constantly evaluate ourselves, and that happens on a weekly basis. So that's one of the areas. Coming back to entrepreneurship, uh, Arshad, I have seen a lot of people who are very creative and has the talent to do this kind of job, but sometimes they might be problematic. There might be problems with their investments. So is it a must for a person to have the latest technology and the gadgets and the software in order to make their talent into use? I would say directly outright I would say no. Uh, talent and technology are two different things. Uh, talent is the human aspect of it and how creative is with a lot of knowledge and skill that we develop and technology will obviously keep on growing and the outlets or rather the uh, the products that we, you put finally can be given a little bit of icing on top of your cake, uh, but technology always a part of uh, 
garnishing or rather like the icing on top of the cake and your cake is actually your skill that is the human expertise. Right, Arshad. Now coming back to the pandemic crisis which all of us are facing at the moment and it has affected most of our businesses. Has the pandemic affected your business in some sort of way and what are the strategies that you have implemented in to resort from this problem? Well, it actually did uh, and quite luckily we uh, just before the pandemic, uh, a year before the pandemic, uh, we ventured into one of uh, our other strategic business units which is the PR arm. Uh, and then uh, we had a diversified portfolio, thank God, and uh, uh, because of that we were able to face the pandemic relatively more uh, easy uh, than, than, than any other business or than we were before. We, uh, we adapted and uh, as, as a digital business it was relatively less, I could say, but one of our arms, which is a filmmaking arm, was hit uh, uh, was was severely hit because we can't go out do our filming or do our productions so that that arm actually got uh, like a severe hit however with the the diversification that we've made that we did it was relatively easy for us to uh, face the pandemic situation right ashad well the time factor is obviously a very critical point at this time so as my final question what is your next step from uh, the congress and what's your vision in the future um so our collective vision, as I said, uh, we started as a uh, business with, with, a, with a huge amount of passion. And uh, one of the main reasons why we came into this was Urban Party. So our vision or our next immediate goal is to uh, grab a big bite of the international market, I could say, because with the recent advancements, with the technology, making the entry barriers being easy, uh, we can approach to the, the global market and uh, co as Congress we are quite proud to say that we have um, people working from around di five different countries who are already working in Congress. So we are actually looking forward to uh, support our country which is right now facing a debt crisis, uh, which is also we are very much in need of external in, uh, income. So the next step, big step for Congress is to go out there and grab a big piece and bring it back to our country. Great, Ashad. Then we have come to the end of our show and I thank you very much for allocating your time here with us and I wish you all the best with your business and your future as well. Thank you very much. Well, that was our episode today on Business Best. We'll be back again next week at the same time, Fridays at 7 p.m. Don't go anywhere because the blueprint is up next where you can get some useful business tips and tools. I'm Suzanne Shinali. Stay safe and have a good night. Thank you.